Hello everyone, welcome back to Mostly Math. Today, we are going to evaluate another complex number problem. We're going to consider the square root of a complex number z in Cartesian form. So this is obviously easy enough to evaluate if you had it in polar form, if we wrote it in terms of r e to the i theta. Of course, the result would simply be the square root of r e to the i theta over 2, using the properties of exponentials. So if we want to evaluate the square root of z in Cartesian form, first we must convert the x plus i y form to the r e to the i theta form, which is pretty straightforward. We know that this is just simply equal to the square root of, and here's where it gets interesting, we have, you know, r squared is of course equal to x squared plus y squared. So we actually have the square root of the square root of x squared plus y squared for r, which is interesting. And obviously we know that tangent of our angle theta is equal to y over x. So this tells us the argument of the complex exponential here is going to be e to the i there's still uh, one half, but we have arctangent of y over x for the angle here. And it's pretty straightforward how we're going to proceed. All we're going to do is evaluate the square roots and use the, oh sorry, this isn't here yet, that was a, that was a spoiler e to the i inverse tangent y over x. Now we just simply take the square root of the square root, which is pretty cool. We put a one half there. So it becomes x squared plus y squared to the one quarter power. And we have e to the i one half inverse tangent of y over x. This is the result that we seek. We know that e to the i x or, or theta in this case. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just write out one more, one more line. So the result that we seek is just x squared plus y squared to the one quarter power multiplied by cosine one half inverse tangent of y over x plus i sine of inverse tangent sine of one half inverse tangent y over x. So at this point, we've done all the complex arithmetic. We see that the result that we are seeking simply involves us evaluating this strange looking trigonometric expressions with trig functions of one half of some arctangent, which looks scary at first, but we've taken any calculus courses, you've seen expressions like this in the valuation of trigonometric integrals. You always use the trick of calling what's in the arctangent theta. So we're going to call this theta. So we're really just looking for sine and cosine of theta over 2. And we should recall some familiar identities about how we're going to do that. But first we have to write down the right triangle. So if we call this theta, right triangle of course, if we wanted theta to be inverse tangent of x. Y over x rather. This tells us that tangent of theta is equal to y over x, of course. So this means that this has to be y, this is x, and this is the square root of x squared plus y squared, of course. And we're going to use a formula that you may recall from high school about this. Okay, let's go ahead and remember that if we have a cosine squared or a sine squared of theta, we can simply write this as 1 plus or minus cosine 2 theta over 2. And I'm just, 
I basically use this notation to show that it holds for either the cosine or the sine with the plus or minus respectively. I recall this by knowing um, the limits. So you check it at zero, you plug in, cosine zero has to be one of course. So you plug zero under here, you get one plus one over two, which is one. So the cosine has to be plus and the sine has to be the minus. That's how, that's how I always remember it. I never have to look up this one, but we don't actually want theta here and two theta here. We want to have theta here and theta over two here, but that's pretty easy. We'll just take the square root and replace theta by theta over two to do that. So we now know that cosine or sine of theta over two is simply the square root of one plus or minus cosine theta over two. And this is the identity that we need to evaluate these trig functions. We see that this formula only depends on the cosine. So we only have to extract the cosine from this diagram. This tells us that cosine of theta is equal to, well, it's just the adjacent over the hypotenuse, of course x over the square root of x squared plus y squared is our cosine function. Now we just have to insert our expression for cosine theta into our identity here. This will give us cosine and sine theta over two, which are the expressions here. So we have cosine theta over two is simply the square root of one plus x over square root of x squared plus y squared over two. And I don't think I have quite enough room, but let's go ahead and simplify this. We're going to multiply inside the radical by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So when we do this, it clears the x squared plus y squared on top but we also have to put one on the bottom. So this goes outside becoming x squared plus y squared to the negative one quarter. And then we have square root of x squared plus y squared plus x over two. And this seemingly ugly factor of x squared plus y squared to the one quarter is actually good because we'll see that it'll cancel nicely with the x squared plus y squared to the plus one quarter that we had originally. And similarly, we can find that sine of theta over two is just going to be uh, one minus x over the square root of x squared plus y squared over two, which we can similarly simplify to be, see, so yeah, I'm just running out of room. It's great. X squared plus Y squared to the minus one quarter. And now we have the square root. It's the same as what we had above, but there's just a minus sign. Square root of X squared plus Y squared minus X over two. And this is all we need to evaluate the final result. Have to erase our identity now. But Final result is simply uh, square root of x plus i y is now just, so we have cosine theta over two. So square root of x squared plus y squared plus x over two plus i. See, it gets kind of messy, doesn't it? square root of x squared plus y squared minus x over two. And this is our final result. Now, I don't know of any neater ways to write that. That's why I kept this, the square roots of two in. Obviously you could take them outside and add in additional parentheses. It's up to you. Um, but this is the best way that I know I actually took this presentation from the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Lectures 
physics, which I'll link to in the description. Feynman thought this was a pretty neat um, exercise to test your understanding of the conversion between Cartesian and polar and actually applying it for something useful, um, which I, I think is cool. Useful in the sense that you can evaluate an unusual Cartesian form, but I've never actually seen this needed to be used in practice. So if you know any uses, please leave a note in the description. And if you like this, want to see more math, please subscribe. See you next time.